testing. One, two, a three. Let people start getting warm and comfortable and horny and getting that sexual tension going. Hey guys, I'm Ali. Welcome to my channel. This is where I share with you guys a little bit about my sexual journey, my sexual exploration, some fun stories, some fun experiences that I've had. I'm hoping that you can relate, I can relate, we can all relate. So today I'm gonna talk about a recent experience I just had where Gav and I went to a sex club. We've been traveling quite a bit, so it's really rare that we're in Montreal for a long period of time. But this time we are here. We've been here for about two weeks now and I'm using this app as an opportunity to explore uh, the sexual life of the city a little bit. So a good friend of ours recommended this club called Club L. I've been to a sex club in Montreal before only once. If you watched one of my last video about unicorn apps, uh, you will hear the story that I told about meeting a couple online at a sex club called Obsession, which is in the east, 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 east of Montreal. Huge place, it's like a hotel. Um, so that was my only experience. So I'm gonna tell you guys about Club L. It's on Jean Talon East. It's a secret little place. In these types of places, usually you can only go as a couple, as a single lady, or uh, as an accompanied male. So single men can't go by themselves. They need to be in a group um, to be able to attend these types of places. Now, I saw in the email beforehand that there was a dress code and being on the road for so long, <laughs> Gab and I didn't exactly have our you know, super top outfits to spend a fancy night on the town. So I was just hoping that when we would get there, they would let us in anyways. When they saw how we were dressed, well, I mean, I was looking cute. I was wearing a nice black jumpsuit with my little white and gold sneakers, but Gab was wearing his Birkenstocks. He doesn't own pointy, fancy shoes. It is not his style at all. So the girl behind the counter was like, mm, I don't know if I could let you in. I'm gonna go ask the manager and I'll let you know. She said, we're not a bar or a club, you know, we like to keep things very upscale, very exclusive, which I get. But at the same time, like, we go spend a lot of money in there, so like, let us dress how we'd like to dress. Anyways, she comes back with a pair of shoes in her hands, and I just said, oh my god, Gab is so not gonna be down for this, like, we're just gonna leave. They were a pair of like, pointy suede sneaker type, type shoes. And she's like, you know, these are brand new, no one's ever worn them, if you wanna try them, and like, Gab's feet were not gonna fit in there, so he tried. But then he just said, no, this isn't gonna work. So she said, okay, fine, since it's your first time, you can come in like that, but next time, uh, just make sure you're aware of the dress code. So you have to pay for a membership. We just got a monthly membership, even though we planned on probably only going just once, because we're on the road a lot. So it cost us about 150 bucks to get in. It was two membership fees, plus the entrance fees for the evening. But it did include dinner. And surprisingly, the dinner was so, so good. So, we get in, it's early, it's maybe about nine o'clock. We were told if you're new to be there before 10 so you could get a tour of the place and know the rules. Not too many people yet. Music is good, it's at a good level so you can talk. It's like a bar with standing tables. There's couples sitting everywhere. Nice kind of vibe. Our waitress is really, really nice. We order two flutes of champagne and we're just sitting and we're chilling and we're observing and we're laughing and we're just having fun because Gab and I always have fun when we go out. And we're waiting for the tour and you know, we're checking out the kind of people that are there. A little bit of a mixed crowd between older and younger and at this point, everyone's kind of keeping to themselves a little bit, you know? They call us for the tour. So we go upstairs to the second floor. A little bit of a backstory. So this, Space used to be a case des jardins. They kept uh, some infrastructure from the the case. So upstairs is where all the offices were, and they turn all the offices into bedrooms. They also kept the conference room and the conference table, which I'll tell you about uh, in a second. So you go upstairs and you see all the rooms. There's maybe about eight or nine of them and there's beds in all of them. A nice big bed, clean, with like a sink inside and towels and so on. And on the outside of the rooms, there's some couches lined up. There's like a few little BDSM toys that are available as well. The animator was really nice. She did about three tours that night, so I can just imagine that there's always new people every weekend that go, and I really, really, really appreciate that they take the time 
with the newbies to explain how this kind of place works so that everybody is on the same page. So the rooms are first come, first serve. That means if there's a free room, you go in it if you want to with your partner, with whoever you're with. The windows are glass, but the door is just a regular wooden door, but you can see through the windows what's happening. So she said you can keep the door open, you can keep the door closed, you can watch if you'd like if you're from the outside. And she explained to us uh, consent. So she gave us a few examples of visual consent, just uh, gestural, I'm used to French words. Um, oh my God, gestures. <laughs> uh, gestures that you can provide to people and that you, so you can understand what the gestures are to know if you're allowed to enter the room or not. So she could say, um, Maybe you can enter the room and you could just, you're could you just told to sit on the couch and watch. That's okay. Maybe you'll be invited to play, but consent is number one. They place so much emphasis on consent in this place, which I thought was really, really important and just really great to make people feel comfortable. They also encouraged the use of no. They said, we love no's. Everybody should say no. And you know, she went on to explain that it's really hard for people to say no sometimes. So it's so important to respect the no and they really respect everyone's comfort level, sense of security, and so on. Uh, I really, really like that because she's right. It is hard to say no sometimes. And if you continue down the hall, you get to the conference room, which is this giant room with a big conference table and a pat, like um, it was almost like a gym mat on it with sheet on it. So that was the orgy room. So anything goes in there, you can sit and watch, you can sit and fuck, you can sit and play, you could do whatever you want. Again, consent being number one. So she told us to touch the mat and it was super hard and that's what she told us was in the bedrooms. But they looked like regular mattresses from far. But she did say, for you know, sanitary purposes and to protect the mattresses from any liquids, so it's just easy to clean. And if you're in a private room, as soon as you're done your business, please take your cuddles to the outside. So there's couches and stuff on the outside because they wanna use, maybe someone wants to use the room again. So as soon as you exit the room, there's these people named Vi Vigils, Vigils? that come and clean the room. They sanitize it right away. They change the sheets and everything and get it ready for the next people. So they are on point, impressive. And you know, they have showers upstairs. They have the bathrooms and fresh towels and stuff like that. And you know, nudity is encouraged, but not um, necessary. Everything is optional. So in terms of participating, being naked, um, you know, they really want just everyone to have a comfortable, open, secure, safe, good time. Then we come downstairs and you know, it's bumping a little bit. The music's getting a little bit louder. People are dancing a little bit more. So we ordered ourselves another drink and I hadn't been dancing in so long. So I went on the dance floor, Gab watched me from far. It was fun. There was like a bachelorette party there and we were just having a good time. And then at some point Gab and I say, okay, you know what? Let's go upstairs and check it out. And it was just us upstairs and he's like, why isn't anyone upstairs yet? Like, can we get this started? And I was like, no, you know, people need to, you know, work up to it. It's like 9.30, who's be coming upstairs and like fucking right away. Like this is a process, it takes time, let people enjoy their evening, let people start getting warm and comfortable and horny and getting that sexual tension. Going. So we, you know, hung out upstairs a little bit. And then at one point on the couch, you know, we start making out and start taking off my clothes a little bit. And that was fun because some people started coming upstairs and I was half naked. So that was, you know, we were both kind of giggling like little school children. And, but it was fun, it was sexy. And then we said, you know what? We're just gonna go in a room. So we get up, we go in a room and we start playing around in there and we kept the door open. And, you know, I was, I had a hard time. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was enjoying it. Gab was doing things to me that I love but I had a hard time getting into my normal state of mind. Not because I was shy that people were watching, more so because I was like, okay, this is happening, we're here, like I gotta keep a lookout for who's coming, like maybe there's a cute girl walking by that I need to establish some visual contact with to like let her in, to make sure that like she's welcome, but I also wanna make sure like not to accidentally give contact eye contact to the guys, like things like that. So that threw me off a little bit. 
And, you know, then we just switched positions and we kind of continued playing along and so on. And then Gab at some point did close the door because he said he was just being thrown off by people watching uh, him. Even though they could still see through the glass window, but having the door closed just provided us with a more um, intimate moment. So, you know, we had fun, we did our business. And then, you know, when we were done, we got up, we went to go take a shower, which was so nice. They provided the soap, the air, the water pressure was great. The nice towels got all cleaned up and everything. And then we walked around a little bit because it was a bit more busy. People were starting to get uh, more involved in the activities upstairs. So we were just people watching, you know, we were walking by the rooms. There were foursomes, there were threesomes happening in the orgy rooms. There was a bunch of stuff happening in there. And it was just cool, you know? I thought I was going to be more turned on by watching people and maybe it was because I had or just had sex so, you know, my, my level of excitement was uh, kind of a bit lower because I was satiated. Or, you know, I just like didn't think I, I didn't get as turned on as I thought I would, you know? It was hot, don't get me wrong, but like, I just thought I was watching Pornhub, you know? I was like, wow, it's cool, like there's people fucking in front of me, great. You know, and then we went downstairs and we got our poutine because I told you that this place, the food is included with your entrance fee. And after midnight, I think, the only thing they have left on the menu is their poutine with their homemade fries, you know, because a lot of people, they go upstairs, they have sex, they're hungry after. So what better snack to have available to you after you fuck is a beautiful poutine with homemade fries. And it wasn't just like a small poutine. It was a big, portion size with homemade fries, delicious gravy, delicious cheese. Like I would even say it was better than that by the Like it was good. I would even just go there to eat the poutine. So you guys are probably wondering, did we meet anybody? No, not because there weren't people available to meet, but I'm still a little bit shy when it comes to approaching girls. So I know this is a place that is the perfect place for me to practice these skills, but still, I think it was a good first step that we went and that we discovered and we explored and we got a little bit comfortable and that the next time when we go, I'll build up a little bit more confidence. And you know, we left, we went home, we cuddled and had a great sleep. So that was our experience at Club L. Would I go back? Probably not alone with Gab. I'd probably go back with Gab and a girl, let's say, so we could have fun all together. Uh, I think more people, the more fun. If you guys have uh, any good e stories, any good experiences at a sex club in Montreal or wherever else in the world, let me know, drop in the comments below. And also, uh, let me know if you have any recommendations, you know, if there's any like secret eyes wide chat parties that are going on in the city that I don't know about that I need an invitation to. And uh, I'd love to hear it. So that's it, that's my sex club story. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more videos, more experiences. If there's anything that you guys are curious about me, you can ask. I'm ready and willing to share, and I hope you guys are open enough to share some of them with me. Mwah!